Hello everyone, this is Matthew Yu. Today we are going to talk about how to use Power BI to connect to Microsoft Office 365 files. So what is the definition of Office 365 files? In my definition, that is any file that is readable to Power BI and you store it on the Office 365 cloud. So what is readable to Power BI? That is the most uh, common data, data sources Power, Power BI supports, such as CSV, TSV, Excel file, access file. And as the opposite example is MP4 file. Since Power BI cannot read MP4 file, it doesn't matter where to store it. So as for you store on 365 Cloud, what does that mean? So when you put any file to Microsoft Office 365, they use the same infrastructure to store and process those files. So wherever you store it, it is the same. Uh, you can use the same logic to pull the files. Some of the common examples that we use today is team file share, no matter it is in a conversation or in the uh, file share workspace. And the classic example is in your SharePoint document library. You, you upload that into the library and people can read that. And then it is the OneDrive for your personal or for the business. It is the same. And some other Office 35 shared locations, something like your uh, file attachment or you upload the file on Yammer conversation. It is the same. Once we know the definition, I'm going to show you a demo how to get a file and then how to refresh this file from the Office 365 with Teams as an example. And the second part of the video, I'm going to talk about some general topics, uh, the questions or error messages that we receive from people. I'm going to explain how to resolve those issues. And the last part, I'm going to talk about some common use cases that uh, might inspire you on your daily automation. In the demo I'm going to show, I'm going to use team file share as an example. And in my uh, demo, I'm going to use Excel file as an example. But you can see here, they support all the different uh, file formats, CSV, Excel, the old Excel. And all the UI service and documents is on October 2020. So when you see the video, your UI might be a little bit different from mine. And my Power BI is using the latest version, and that is a Windows Store version for 64 bits. And before I also go into the demo, I'm going to assume that you have the access to the target file. So which means you are either the owner of this file that you uploaded the file, or you are the member of that group that you ultimately receive the access or someone shared this access with you. Because if you do not have access to the file, you cannot read that either way. So let's go into the demo. In order to import the file into Power BI, first we need to get the actual file link location. There are a lot of ways on the internet that tells you how to get file location, but so far we recommend the Open in Desktop app way to do that and it hasn't failed us in the past four years. So let me show you how to do that. Here, I have my file that is in this uh, demo channel, and I click to open this file. Now, the team show me the preview of this file, and I can click this file button under info, and there is a button called open in desktop app. I'm going to click that, and my Microsoft Excel desktop automatically launches. Once I get that, I'm going to click this file. And also under info, there is a copy path. This is the path that I want to get to use in Power BI. And here I want to also mention that in OneDrive, SharePoint, doc Document Library, and all those places, you can al always go into file, info, open in desktop to open this file, and you can copy past from here. Let me show you what the link will be look like and what is what will be the actual link. I'm going to paste here, and you see this is the link, how that shows like. And that is not the final link. We are going to delete this question mark, web equals to one. We are going to delete that. And this is the file that we are going to use in Power BI. Now, let's switch to Power BI Desktop. As usual, I click Get Data once I launch Power BI Desktop. 
In the data source, I'm going to use web as the data source. It looks like the little earth icon. I click connect. Here, I paste my URL into this window. And again, as we just mentioned, we are going to delete this question mark web equals one. Once we delete, I click OK. The second part is still going to ask me for authentication. Here, don't just click connect. You are going to click the organizational account to authenticate. If you click anonymous and connect, it will you will get a failure message because most of the IT department doesn't allow anonymous authentication. I click sign in. And this is using the OSAN2 to do the sign-in. And of course, your identity provider might be a little bit different. But you can see here, you are currently signed in. I'm going to click Connect button. Now it's checking my access. If everything looks good, now I can see my file. That is my uh, sample sales data. I'm going to click Load. And now my data is here. Then I can use this file to start making my reports. That's pretty much it. Here I'm going to show you how to refresh work in Power BI Desktop and Power BI Services. And this is the amazing part of how Power BI can help your collaboration. So in here, I use this data to make the report that is here showing on the screen for Power BI. And I can refresh to show this the latest version. And my total sales is about 1 million. And I have another colleague who come in and he added some new records. I'm just going to put the records here. And after he done this, uh, he done adding the file, he closes the file. And he sent me a message, hey, Matthew, can you please refresh this Power BI report so we can see the latest data. And I just click the refresh button. And you can see my sales number totally increased. And see how fast it commits into from the Microsoft Office 365 into your local. And the last part, I'm going to show you how the refresh work on the cloud. I'm going to save this file on the location, on my desktop location, and I'm going to upload this into my Power BI personal workspace. I'm going to name this as one, two, three, four, five for demo purpose and upload into my workspace to show you how the refresh will work. All right, now I finish uploading. I'm going to click the open 12345 in the Power BI and to show you how to schedule the refresh. I'm going to go into all my reports and find my data set of this 12345. I'm going to click open menu button and there is a schedule refresh. Here, you need to know that there is no need for Power BI gateway connection. You can totally skip this part. You see there's a cross button here. It says there's no credential. Click this credential button. And here, do not use anonymous. You're going to use OSAN2. And you can, in here, privacy level, it depends. In here, I'm going to click none and click sign in. Now I go to my identity provider to sign into my account. And it is done. So I've credential pass, and there's the cross is gone. I can go into the schedule refresh, and I can, depending on what license you're going to use, you can schedule up to 48 times a day refresh. So your end user always see the latest data. I'm going to put in the 10 a.m. and 12 a.m. and send the failure message to the owner, click apply. And that's it. It concludes all our demo for today. In this section, let's talk about some common issues that people might be facing. The very first common one is you receive some error message that says unable to connect. And the message might look like this is we counter some issue and some weird message, or is the URL is invalid. So the reason why you get this message because you put the wrong URL. 
And I know there are lots of ways you can get URL for a file. Uh, even for one single file, there is a different URL, let's say web version, Teams version. They trigger specific script, but the way that we always use is to use the desktop app way. And that's the best way that never failed us. So again, so the resolution is very easy. It only takes two minutes, as you can see from the video. Just uh, follow the steps, step by step, and to get the correct URL. And you can see here, the correct URL is also remember to remove question mark web equals one at the end. And you can see the, uh, I'm comparing some the correct versus the wrong one. You can see this is uh, some examples. And for the same file, it has different output for different, uh, if you use different instances. And, but the right, the right URL, you can see always end with dot, your like file extension. And you can see the others is they're either super long or this uh, added source code is super strange. So yeah, remember that your the query URL is always short and end with uh, X, uh, your file extension. We follow the steps, you should be fine. Cool, let's go into the second one. And the second one is a very specific error message. It says, access to the resource is forbidden. And why? The reason is when you're doing authentication, you use anonymous in instead of using organizational account. So do not use anonymous. I'm going to show you how to fix that because if you use anonymous, the system will remember this and will use that for all the other resources. And that is not good. So the resolution is we're going to delete and reset the SharePoint credential. So as a wrong example, don't follow me here. I'm going to click the connect. And I get that the access to resource forbidden, no matter how much I try, it keeps giving me that error. So how can I fix that? You are going to go to the transform data and in the data source settings. Find, see the icon here, find the one that looks like a little earth. Earth means web. So find something is your organization.sharepoint.com. Find everything that related to that. If you don't know, just search for SharePoint. And click the either edit, edit permission or clear commission, uh, permissions. In this case, I'm going to click clear permissions. Delete. Now you have the chance to reset your credential. Once I deleted and reset my credential, I can go into get data and use web and report in my Excel address. Again, delete question mark equals web equals one. And now I have the chance to use organizational account to sign in. Once you sign in, now the message won't show up. And click connect. And you're all good to go. So again, basically the resolution is to reset your credential to SharePoint. The last question is, if I, my file has a new location, let's say we move from test production, how, I, how are we going to switch that for my report? Click edit, uh, transform data, it was called edit queries. Under the source, there is a little gear button, click the source. You click, you see the URL that you entered previously. So you know the way how to get the new URL and just paste your new URL there. Click OK. And if they need any authentication, just add, add the credential and you will be all good. So yeah, very quick fix. So this is concludes all the Q&A and issues. So one last thing that I want to say is, what if you still face the issues? So if you face the issues, you can always go into the support.powerbi.com or go into this page. Uh, that is the submit a ticket page with the Microsoft. If you open this, you will be able to submit a ticket and you can always trigger this from support.powerbi.com. Under the create support ticket section. And that's everything for the Q&A session.
So the last thing I want to talk is about some use cases that might inspire you on the daily automation and how to increase the team collaboration. So with this, you can you will be able to connect to Power BI to Office 365 files. And there are lots of ways you can use this. So the first, as we show in the demo, your team members can share and edit one single file. And using the refresh button, your leadership team always gets the latest version of your edited file. And some other examples you can use is that it's common to us is the systems such as Cognos or Informatica can drop this uh, latest Excel file or set free file at a fixed location on the SharePoint. For example, they always drop into the SharePoint the document library some folder with some name. So system can at a certain time go in and grab the data and refresh. And if you cannot drop that into SharePoint because it's authentication, you can always use the, you can see here, is my little uh, synchronization app to all sync from your local to SharePoint. And there are some other cool use cases that you can use is, for example, Microsoft Forms. You, uh, people fill in the survey, and there's also a link to the Excel file. And you can use that to also refresh your survey data to show people. And some other cool ideas, oh, definitely you guys have more better use cases than, than me. There's a lot of ways that you can use. You can later to integrate that with your Power Platform, such as your Power Apps, your Power Automate, to uh, append more data into your Excel and extract that to use. And also if you are an Azure user, you know the blob container and the blob storage, you can use that also as a data source and use the logic apps and the others data factory to also get the latest data and put in the Power BI. Uh, with uh, Power Platform and the Azure, there's like endless possibilities. So I definitely uh, want you to basically try and I'm looking forward to hear some cool ideas from you. And that is everything for my tutorial today. Thank you and have a nice day.